Hello and welcome to a new Kaba time. It's 27th of July and well, I've got so, so many beautiful watches to offer you. We've got nine parts of Omega, about uh, 98 Omega in this listing. A bunch of Rolex, a bunch of Cartier, Almar Spiguet, Piaget, um, and then some other brands. Let's quickly dive into the Omega. We start, of course, with a simple beauty, simple affordables. Uh, number two and three have their original strap and buckle, then other crisp pieces, uh, tonneau, dividel, square, uh, plenty of options, a very crisp gray dial at the back. And then we've got this one. Um, let me just sit down so it's easier. This one is near new old stock, original strap, buckle and box. And still got the purple goo on the case back. This is how the watches came from factory when new. Uh, this is a protective layer, you can peel it off or just uh, put some acetone, which is nail polish remover on it. And it will come loose with original box. Boom. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a padding to make sure it doesn't slide, but yeah, very nice. Uh, beautiful crisp DeVille tin automatic, a nice Calibre 285, a few simple Genevs, all of these very, very sharp white sunburst dials. And then this beautiful blue gray tapestry dial. This one is 36 millimeter, um, very thin automatic, pretty cool piece. Another automatic is this uh, Omega de Ville Pavé d'Or with uh, solid gold bezel and yeah, beautiful brown dial. The dial does have some pattern on the edges, not sure if you can see it. Then a few more simple Genève, all very, very sharp condition. Then this one, which is a Calibre 560, um, one of the fabled 3000 uh, 3, um, movements ever made for that one. Beautiful white linen dial, next to it beautiful Seamaster Deville uh, with beautiful blue sunburst dial. And then we've got Seamaster Genève and then two Genève. Um, the Seamaster Genève is basically a Seamaster 600 evolution. So in the um, late 1960s Omega realized that the Seamaster line is better suited for actual dive watches and not dress watches. So the Seamaster 600, which you see here, um, which is the same as this one, they started transitioning them into Seamaster Genève. So first Seamaster case with Genève dial, like this one. Uh, this one has an engraving on the back, but yeah, as you see, it's the Seamaster 600 case with Genève dial. But then, um, the, when they ran out of the Seamaster cases stock, you just got the um, the blank Genève cases. This is the exact same reference, the exact same model. Just Omega decided um, they should distinguish the Seamaster line more by, well, not making simple Seamasters like this. Well, not putting the Seamaster name on the simple models. This one, super crisp, by the way, fully original with original strap and buckle. Uh, the strap is missing the loops though. Um, yeah, this is a nice condition with some patina. Anyway, let's move on to the Seamasters. We've got three Seamaster Devils. First one has some patina. Two next ones are super sharp. This one with silver brush dial. So depending on how light hits it, it's very bright or a bit darker. Just really depends on how light hits it with original beads of rice bracelet and uh, yeah, beautiful hippocamp case. But then we've got this one, super sharp white sunburst dial. This one is a later 1960s model. Then uh, we've got Seamaster 600. We've got a Meister dial and a Turler dial. So Meister and Turler were both uh, retailers like Tiffany & Co. And they would uh, often co-brand their names on the dials. Next up, another Turler dial, this one beautiful um, gold-capped Seamaster. And then we've got this beauty. This one is um, quite rare to find nowadays. It's an original black glossy dial and it's in superb condition. There's some dust on the crystal, but just such a pretty piece. And 
it's very hard to photograph and uh, video but it is so incredibly beautiful the black glossy dial just pops so beautifully with nice sea master on the case back of course and then we've got two chubby cases both are um, well what I like to call meteorite dials um, this one black dial is becoming a bit um, well it's tropical black dial so it's developing developing chocolate patina with uh, like a golden undertone a really really beautiful piece and this one also big sea master case back super cool and then here we've got this one this one already full-on chocolate golden sparkle meteorite just all that goodness just really really stunning piece this one all right next up we've got some more uh, chubby sea monsters first up we've got this super crisp uh, 166010 and this one also this one also very sharp just the hands have some patina then we've got a few chubby sea monsters first up we've got this one with cool indices um, has some pattern on the dial as you can see well these usually have pattern um, the dials by themselves usually develop it even uh, when they're perfectly put away um, this one beautiful sea master calendar here another one just really really stunning pieces then we've got this one this is 36 millimeter Omega manual wind with beautiful leaf hands and blued hand, blued hand. Um, dial does have some pattern. Then this 38 millimeter beast, beautiful sunburst indices. 37 and a half millimeter, eight carat solid gold. Um, whatever size this is, but beautiful khaki dial. And then lastly, this one, just very very sharp. The strap isn't uh, the most beautiful, but the case is just super sharp, unpolished, superb original condition with beautiful original dial and syringe hands. Anyway, moving on, we start with a ton of Seamaster Cosmic. The first here, manual wind, 35 and a half millimeters. This one has original strap and buckle. Strap is a bit, um, Toughened, um, well, after a long time, they often become a bit stiff. And then this super sharp automatic, unpolished, incredible condition. This one, nice condition, but cases have some signs of use, and the dial also has a mark. Beautiful Turley Sea Monster Cosmic with um, some patina. Some another Turley, this one. Um, also beautiful condition with um, the silver sparkle dial then a white sparkle dial totally this one has um, a mark here at four then a gold plated um, also a sparkle dial beautiful 38 millimeter Seamaster Cosmic 2000 with original bracelet beautiful blue sunburst Seamaster Cosmic with some loom burn on the loom tips and then this beautiful big size uh, 38 millimeter Genève F300 Hertz. So this is uh, not quartz but battery, um, because quartz of course comes after this. Um, up next we've got some more Sea Monster this and big sizes. This one is a 36 and a half millimeter Sea Monster Silver Sparkle dial, um, 38 something CMOS millimeter CMOS or beautiful silver sparkle dial as well then this 38 millimeter big beast this one has a um, silver brush dial so depending on how light hits it will be very bright or quite dark uh, original bracelet and everything and then these beauties these are 37 millimeter big size they're Japan market limited editions well they're limited to the Japanese market, but uh, they weren't produced to a certain number. Well, not that I know. Um, but yeah, they were only sold in Japan and just really beautiful pieces. Two without bracelet, two with original bracelet. Uh, we've got gray slate dial, very, very beautiful piece. Does have a few marks on the dial, but super, super stunning. 
Um, then we've got the blue dial. This one turned into a bit of a purple golden sparkle patina. Really, really stunning. And then we've got this one, crisp blue brush dial. Just incredible, just pops so beautifully. And its brother, also crisp blue dial. This one is a bit more purple than you and just really, really stunning. Um, next up, we've got this Omega Dynamic from 1990s uh, with uh, beautiful blue waffle dial. This one, super strong loom. Um, very nice piece and then we've got 36.3 millimeter Omega Genève EQA this one has a really cool logo on the back as it was uh, the logo of a Japanese scholarship foundation and then also this big size the stormtrooper helmet whatever um, super sharp as well moving on we've got a buttload of constellations we start with this silver brush dial super sharp condition then we've got two 35 millimeter ones this one is the white sunburst and the gold sunburst then moving on we've got a lot of gerald genta designed c cases um, so you might know Gerald Genta from the Patek Philippe Nautilus, Adamax Royal Oak, Universal Genève Paul Router, and also from these watches. This one, um, some flat bezels. Here we've got a solid white gold fluted bezel with beautiful white linen dial. And some um, silver brush dials as well. These have hesolite crystals, these ones have mineral crystals. Uh, moving on, we've got a few more constellations, but almost to the end, this beautiful blue lapis lazuli style enamel, this incredible crisp um, white sunburst pipe hand dial, and then these two arrowhead dials, well first is arrowhead, the second one is, well I, would, I guess it would be considered an explorer dial, um, this one, does these have uh, quite heavy patina. It's difficult to capture their beauty on pictures and video, but still quite beautiful. Um, and this one is a bumper automatic, and this one is a full rotor. Um, yeah, this one with rose gold capped case. So yeah, quite difficult to find vintages in rose gold. This one apparently I put it upside down, but yeah, really pretty piece. Um, Constellation Manhattan from 1990s with day date um, and then we've got two chrono stops we've got the grey one with the original bracelet and then the blue one grey one has some uh, patina on the dial the blue one is super sharp and then lastly for Omega we've got the Speedmaster this one is a 1970 Speedmaster uh, well it was made in the year 1970 with beautiful original step dial, um, nice original loom, everything um, fully age appropriate. And yes, of course it has the moon writing because this is after the moon landing. Then moving on, we have Rolex. First up, we've got this uh, simple Rolex Oyster Subseconds ladies watch. And then we've got a few 31 millimeters. We've got this one which is a 6066. This one has a repainted dial, but looks quite beautiful. Then we've got this incredible piece. This is a 6466 Oyster Date with incredible black waffle dial. Just so, so beautiful. Quite rare to find, especially in condition this sharp. And also a nice roulette date. So the date for these two alternate between red and black every single day. Then we've got a 6466, uh, very sharp condition um, with a crisp white sunburst dial. A 6694, um, this is a 34 35 millimeter one, super sharp condition. This one from 1969, 1970 something, with very nice uh, gray sunburst dial with, rose, uh, with gold accents. The dial does have some loom burn on the edges, as you can see. Not perfect, but it is still beautiful. Then this black dial from 
1998, I believe. Uh, the dial has been repainted, um, still quite pretty, but not perfect. Uh, the writing at the bottom is faded. Then this one from 1959, original dial, but the dial has been cleaned up a bit. You see some of the text is missing. This one, original dial, beautiful condition, beautiful blue um, seconds hand just pops so beautifully with original uh, oyster rivet bracelet and then this um, 15200 from 1999 I believe it is beautiful original condition very sharp um, and that's it for this column now we can move on to the last column and it brings us a few more Rolex and then we've got Cartier so first up we've got this beautiful Datejust reference 1601 this one has a white sun brazil which is quite rare for these uh, you usually see them with champagne dials but this one just super stunning has some light patina pictures and videos don't do it justice it looks amazing in the flesh also very sharp case and bezel um, then we've got this 16013 beautiful champagne sun brazil some light patina then this 18038 beautiful blue sun brazil um, nice day date 18 karat solid gold and then moving on we have this uh, 18 karat solid white gold out of my spiga for the tin piece from 1960s and then this piaget this one is like new um, from 1990s full set with original strap buckle box papers everything even still has the original sticker from 1993 on the case back it's uh, pretty much untouched however does have a dent in the bezel at nine as you can see here other than that it is pristine all right moving on we've got this beautiful Cartier Colisee this one has the gold clamshell dial it's a bit hard to video and picture but it is so so beautiful comes on an aftermarket bracelet which has some wear to the plating but the watch itself is very very nice all original condition then next to it we've got a Cartier Santos Rond Solo uh, Cartier Rond Solo this one is from uh, circa 2015 it's sol 18 karat solid rose gold 36 millimeter big size quartz with original strap and 18 karat solid gold buckle and next to it we've got a few rond must so these ones are from 1990s got a white dial a champagne dial and another white dial the art deco with sub seconds moving on we have cartier tanks not one but a bunch of course starting we do with uh, 1973 Cartier Tank Normal this one is a lady size beautiful piece 18 karat solid gold with a beautiful crisp white dial dial has slight spider pattern but it's difficult to see uh, case is unpolished original crown and everything beautiful condition comes on aftermarket um, gold plated bracelet and also included is a leather strap with original buckle the buckle is uh, verme so not solid gold but uh, gold plate over solid silver then we've got the Cartier tank um, trinity dial a gray black dial a black dial another black uh, these first three are quartz then we've got manual wind beautiful men's maroon and the men's red dial and then um, we've got the men's classic dial, this one has spider pattern, case has been refinished, looks super sharp. Um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to capture in pictures. Uh, light mark on the back here, um, and yeah, the back printing is a bit faint, but super sharp overall. And lastly, we've got this um, ivory white dial with uh, also spider pattern, a beautiful piece as well. And last in this row, we've got the Cartier Panther. This one is a reference 1300, which is the large. Uh, they don't make them this large anymore nowadays. This one is 29 by 40, which is 
practically the same size as the vintage Santos Galbi. Moving on, we've got a large tank, um, reference 2715, and then the tank Francaise, also big size automatic. Um, this one, the bracelet fits up to about 6.5 or 6.75 inch wrists. Then we've got a beautiful um, Santos Octagonal GM, so Grand Model, Grand Model, which means large model. This one, very sharp, all original condition from 1984. Um, and then we've got a 1990 Santos Galbe, and next to it, another one from 1990s, but in steel. There we go. And then beautiful automatic from 2010s. This one is a larger size, the Santos 100. Um, and then we have three VLC or Vendome as people like to call them. We've got a 30 millimeter man or unisex size with classic dial, then a Trinity dial has some light button on the top. And then um, a burgundy maroon spider dial. Moving on, we have IWC, beautiful grey dial and a white sunburst dial with light pattern. This one with original crystal with cyclops, quite pretty. And then we've got the 18 karat solid gold ultra thin Jagerle culture, all original strap and buckle and original box and papers, full set. Um, next to it we've got uh, Powermatic or Powerwind with uh, well, the bumper automatic with power reserve indicator, a future matic, also beautiful piece with running seconds and um, power indicator, two Memovox, well three, but two are actual Memovox and then one is just an alarm watch, not the Aerial Culture web, but beautiful big size 40 millimeter and blue sun Brazil. Then an 18 karat solid gold Vulcan chronometer pocket watch. This one very thin and selling pretty much for the price of the gold. Well, small premium over it, but uh, if you buy gold, you also pay a premium. So, um, well, I mean, if you buy gold bars or whatever, or coins, anything, you usually pay a premium. And this is about the same premium as that, but you're getting a watch uh, for free pretty much. So, yeah. And then this beautiful rotary aqua plunge. Beautiful broad arrow hands, something quite rare, hard to find, and yeah, really cool piece with a rotary bracelet. Um, well, the inside is signed rotary, the outside doesn't have any signature. Um, moving on, we've got a small selection of Universal Genève and Longin. I have many more, but uh, well, this listing already has about 150 watches, I didn't want to go over that. Because well, you like it will just be uh, uncomfortable to read through it anyway. So yeah, we'll keep it at this. But if you're looking for any other specific model, I still have a bunch more of this Calatrava. Um, yeah, a few simple Calatrava. This one with original strap and buckle. This one uh, two Breguet numerals, quite pretty. Then this beautiful. Yeah, I need to grab this side. Uh, this beautiful um, blue brushed white shadow automatic, this one is a micro rotor automatic, super stunning, a bit hard to video, but yeah, really beautiful. Also the reason the strap fell off is the previous spring bar broke off, there you go, it's still stuck in here, so I will have my watchmaker drill it out when he services the watch. But um, yeah, I didn't want to put it in just to act as a reminder. Because um, you see, I already forgot. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken it <laughs> at the bottom strap. Anyway, beautiful Universal Genève Square with dated 4 5. And yeah, with original crown, of course. And then beautiful Longin. This one is uh, Ultra Crown, has already been serviced, comes with extract from the archives. Super sharp Longine Admiral automatic this one with the incredible black dial this 1950s Longine sub seconds with beautiful claw hands then two Longine tanks or whatever you want to call them really really sharp squares this one the flagship is near mint 
with original stickers still on the case back super sharp and polished and then this one also superb condition with light um, pattern on the edges but also unpolished very sharp anyway that's it for this listing hope you enjoyed you'll find all the prices and info on reddit the link will be in the description um, if well if you contact this thread you can always send me a, a, a screenshot or whatever on instagram at cabbawatch.idn um, yeah that will be best you can also email me my email can be found in the info in this channel um, or well through the usual channel that you know to reach me um, also for anyone that tried to contact me in the past month through uh, email or reddit or um, any of the other Instagrams um, my apologies for late replies sometimes because just things have been crazy and I haven't been keeping up with them um, but yeah it will all be very clear soon anyway uh, thank you so much for watching hope you enjoy and uh, see you soon